we continue with our discussion and you take another example of synthesis of a synchronous sequential circuit in our last uh, if you recall in our last lecture we talked about a serial adder and in this lecture we shall be talking about that sequence detector. Let us look into this lecture the part 4 of our discussion. So, sequence detector this is, is something which I have already seen earlier just to recall in this sequence detector we want to detect this bit pattern 0 1 1 0 in this input stream x, x is a serial bit stream that is coming and whenever this pattern appears the output z also generates a serial output stream the output bit will become 1 and at all other times output will be 0 and we would be allowing overlapping occurrences of 0 1 1 0 as we have mentioned. This was discussed earlier. Okay. So, this was one example where this, this outputs once were generated. Okay. Now, this was the state transition diagram that we had worked out earlier. Now, from that point let us try to proceed. Here we show the corresponding state table. First step is to go into the state table. So, there are four states. So, I show the four states S0 to S4 because there is a single input there will be two input combinations one corresponding to x equal to 0 x equal to 1. So, when you are in state s 0 and input x is 0. So, you go to s 1 with 0 if it is 1 you remain in s 0 with 0 similarly for the other combinations you can check let us say from s 3 if it is 0 you go back to s 1 s 1 with output 1, if it is 1 we go back to s 0 with output 0. Okay. Well, So, this was the state table, now let us do state assignment, this is the table which is after state assignment and the convention that you have followed is S 0 state is encoded as 0 0, S 1 as 0 1, S 2 as 1 0 and S 3 as 1 1. So, you see these two tables are same, but wherever this S 0 is it is replaced by 0 0, wherever S 1 is it is replaced by 0 1 just that and then we have constructed the transition and output table. This is what we have mentioned transition and output table where we had separated out the states and the outputs instead of showing them in the same table separated by commas we have put them into two separate tables one here and the other here. The first one is for the states second one is for the for the output the output you see is just 0 0 0 1 and all 0 0 0 0 1 and all 0. So, this is how we have proceeded up to the transition and output table it is fairly simple. Now, from there this is uh, the transition and output table I am showing again this is the transition and output table. Now, suppose we are now selecting the memory element let us suppose we are using t flip flops right. Let us see what we are trying to do here, here we are saying is that because there are four states so our sequential circuit model will look like this there will be two memory elements. there will be 
x there will be z and these are y 1 and y small y 1 and y small y 2. Now, what we are saying is that we shall be using t flip flops. So, this will be t 1 and t 2. So, instead of capital Y and capital Y 2 now we will be generating t 1 and t 2 directly from this circuit. So, how we will be generating t 1 and t 2? Now, again for a t flip flop let us think of the excitation requirement for a t flip flop whenever I want to go from 0 to 0. So, the t will be 0, 0 to 1 t will be 1, 1 to 0 t will be 1 that means, whenever there is a change t will be 1 and 1 to 1 again t will be 0. This is how a t flip flop works. Now, let us see here instead of the next state I am just listing t 1 t 2 values here. Let us see from 0 0 I want to go to 0 1 that means, first one is 0 to 0, first one is not changing, second one is changing. So, t 1 t 2 is 0 1, second one is changing 0 0 to 0 0 no change. So, 0 0 no change 0 1 to 0 1 no change see 0 0 no change 0 1 to 1 0 both are changing. Okay, both are changing. So, that is why t 1 t 2 both are 1 1, 1 0 to 0 1 both are changing 1 1, 1 0 to 1 1 only the second one is changing. So, 0 1, 1 1 to 0 1 the first one is changing 1 0, 1 1 to 0 0 both are changing 1 1. So, this is how you are constructing the excitation table corresponding to t flip flop. Right. This is what you have done here. Now, once we have constructed this excitation table, I am showing it again here. From here, you can directly generate the functions and construct the Carnot maps. Here, I have one input x because this is one input, I am showing it in this way, and this y1, y2, I am showing on in this direction. So, this t 1 t 2 first let us consider t 1 this is for t 1 for t 1 where there is 1 there is a 1 here, here, here and here. So, let us see this one is for x equal to 0 1 0 x equal to 0 1 0 this one x equal to 0 1 1 this one x equal to 1 0 1 this one x equal to 1 1 1 this one. So, in this case there will be two cubes one will be like this one will be like this. So, the expression for t 1 will look like this x 1 bar y 1 and this one will be x x and y 2. Similarly, for t 2 if you now go if you now look at t 2 so, you see where t 2 is changing, t 2 is 1, t 2 is 1 here, 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 5 places. So, x equal to 0 and 0 0, x equal to 0 and 0 0 here, x equal to 0 and 1 0 here, x equal to 1 and all these 3, x equal to 1 all these 3. So, here the cubes will be one cube will be like this, one cube will be like this and the other cube can be either this or this. Let us see which one I have taken this x 1 bar y 2 bar x 1 bar y 2 bar is this one this cube y 1 y 2 bar y 1 y 2 bar I have taken this one y 1 y 2 bar and x y 2 bar is this this is t 2. And finally, for z there is a single one here it is a it is x 1 bar y 1 y 2. So, once we have done this, so now what will your circuit look like? Now, if I look 
into this circuit as a big black box. Inside your circuit all these functions will be there, there will be x bar y 1 plus x y 2 this will be there will be one block that will be generating this function t 1, then this will be another functional block, there will be another block that will be generating t 2 and there will be another circuit that will be generating z right. So, your this circuit will be generating your output z and there will be two flip flops this T 1 will be connected to one of them and T 2 will be connected to the other of them and they will be fed back and x will be your input. This will how your circuit will look like. So, now you understand that how you can arrive at the final circuit. You have your state table, make a state assignment, select the flip flop type uh, means after you have the transition and output table, you get the excitation table based on the flip flop type and from the excitation table, you can directly construct the flip flops, you, you, can, uh, you can directly construct the Carnot maps if the number of variables is 3 or 4 of course and you can straight away minimize the functions. Once you minimize the functions, you have got the circuit specification, you can directly arrive at the circuit. right? Now, here we have used a T flip flop right. Now, suppose now we are saying that well let us use J k flip flop not T. So, now how will it look like? Now, see earlier in the previous case we had two flip flops okay. the inputs were T 1 and T 2 and the outputs were generated as small y 1 and small y 2. But now, if you are using j k flip flop, now your requirement will be there will be four inputs that need to be generated j 1 k 1 and j 2 k 2, because for every flip flop we will be generating two inputs the first one will be generating small y 1, the second one will be generating small y 2. Now, again for a j k flip flop you think of the excitation requirement j k flip flop how do you do 0 to 0, 0 to 1, 1 to 0 and 1 to 1. From 0 to 0, you can apply either 0 0 or 0 1. So, 0 do not care. From 0 to 1, you can either apply 1 0 or 1 1. So, 1 do not care. 1 to 0, you can apply either 0 1 or 1 1, which means do not care 1. 1 to 1 means either 1 0 or 1 1, that means uh, just a second, 0 to 1 is uh, 1 to no, 1 to 1 is either 0 0 or uh, either 0 0 or 1 0, that means do not care 0, do not care 0, yeah, fine. So, now you see this j 1, k 1, j 2, k 2 that will have to generate, this was our uh, uh, transition and uh, transition and output table. Now, let us see one by one, present state was 0 0, you are going to 0 1, first one is 0 to 0, 0 to 0 means 0 do not care, you see 0 do not care, then 0 1, 0 1 is 1 do not care, 1 do not care, then 0 0 to 0 0, both are 0 to 0, 0 do not care, 0 do not care, 0 do not care. Then from 0 1 you are going to 0 1, 0 to 0 1 to 1, 0 to 0 is 0 do not care, 1 to 1 is do not care 0, 0 do not care do not like this you can have all right, like this you can get all of them. Now, 
And the point to note is that once you have obtained this table, now you can get the Carnot map for this all these four functions. You will now require four Carnot maps, four for j k j 1 k and one for z, five in total. So, let us say x in this direction and y 1 y 2 here. let us say this is for j 1, for j 1 let us say there is do not care here do not care means 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 this is do not care 0 1 1 0 1 1 is also do not care and uh, j 1 this is also j 1, this is 1. So, x 1 1 and 0 1, 1 and 0 1, this is 1 and these are do not cares, 1 1 0, 1 1 0 is do not care and 1 1 1 is do not care. So, here you can have best you can have a cube like this and minimize it right for j 1. Similarly, for k 1 what will happen? k 1 let us say k 1 will be the second one do not care do not care 1 1 x equal to 0. So, it will be do not care do not care 1 1 and do not care do not care first two are do not care this is 1, 1 1 1 is 1, 1 1 is 1. So, here you can have a bigger cube like this, this is k 1. Similarly, you can have j 2, j 2 will be the middle one, 1 do not care, 1 do not care. So, 1 is for 0 0 0 and 0 1 0, 0 0 0 and 0 1 0 other word do not cares and j 2 0 do not care 1 1 is here 1 0 this two are do not cares. So, here you will have one cube like this and one cube like this this j 2 and then you go for k 2. So, when you have k 2 the last one do not care 0 0 0 and 1 0 0 0 0 and 1 this two do not care and here you have 1 in 0 1 and 1 1 0 1 and 1 1 other side do not care. So, you have a cube like this. Of course, for z there is no need of construction there is a single one no minimization. So, you see you can directly get the functions from here. Now, what you do? You have your combinational circuit, you can design according to these functions. You will be having the input x, you will be having this inputs y 1, y 2 coming from the flip flops and it will be generating z, it will be generating j 1, k 1, j 2, k 2 and you will be having two flip flops here, one getting j 1 k 1 generating y 1, other getting j 2 k 2 and generating y 2. Okay. So, you see the examples that have worked out they show that however complex your circuit can be, well of course, in d and t the number of variables or inputs to the flip flops you need to control a less for j k and s r it becomes bigger, but still it is manageable you can work out you can minimize and there are functions which can be minimized better using j k or t flip flop 
there are other functions which can be minimized better using deep flip flop. So, there is no hard and fast rule that which flip flop is better which will give you smaller circuit. This all comes from experience right. So, here we have worked out a number of examples we shall look at some more examples later. So, let us come to the this already we have done let us come to the end of this lecture. So, what we will see later is that we shall work out a couple of counter design examples because counter designs are interesting. So, in our next lecture we shall be looking at some designs of counters we shall be going through the entire process of counter design and after that we shall be looking into the design of registers and counters from a slightly different perspective. So, those discussions we shall be going through in our later lectures. Thank you.